Hey folks, in today's video it's about the question why doesn't have the polysynth no sine wave? And the answer to that is because no subtractive synthesizer actually has a sine wave because it makes no sense in the terms of the subtractive synthesis method. Um, subtractive synthesis is all about having a rich waveform you start with going into a mixing section where you can combine different complex waveforms and then you use a filter and reduce the overtones from this waveform to create a sound. And the sine wave doesn't have any overtones so it makes no sense to have a sine wave inside of um, a classical subtractive synthesizer. And <clears throat> when we play here a sound and see we have here all these overtones and then we use a filter and we can reduce all these overtones in volume to create a sound. And to make a pure sound or a much more purer sound than this than the saw with all these overtones, we can use the filter for that of course. So we can double click here the uh, filter to go down to C3 and use here the key tracking. So now when we press a key, for instance here D-sharp, D-sharp 3, uh, I think that's D-sharp 3, yeah. The filter frequency is exactly on the key of D-sharp 3. Also this frequency. So now when we use here the um, resonance, we can target or increase the fundamental frequency just with the resonance. So we get a more pure sound out of this. You have still some overtones here, but not too much. Let me change the frequency on the keys. The filter also switches to the right frequency here. So, okay. So you can target basically the fundamental frequency with the filter here. Um, reset to C3 and using the key track. You can also do something like on bass sounds. So let's say we have this bass sound here. Oh, let's take this sound, you can see it better here. Or do, can I increase here this? No. So you want to target maybe the second uh, partial here, right? You can do that too. So instead of going to C3, C3, you go to C4, which is the next partial in the harmonic series. And then you increase the resonance. You can see you increase here the second partial. And it also switches around with the key change. We can use that to make this, the, the bass sound or the sub bass more audible on, you know, laptop speakers, headphones, and so on. You can also target here the third one, this one, by going to, um, what's that, G4. Yeah, G4. So you can basically go up your harmonic series and uh, target each of these partials uh, with the resonance here differently and just amplify something or even reduce it by using here um, a notch or reduce here the fundamental or the second one. So that's basically how subjective synthesis works. You have a complex waveform and then you use the filter section to remove all these overtones and uh, create a sound out of it. There's also um, a synthesis method that's exactly the opposite. And that's, um, so we have here all the sound synthesis methods. Um, the first one is subjective synthesis. Complex waveforms are generated by oscillators, right? And then shaped with filters. Um, and then we have your additive synthesis. A large number of waveforms, usually sine waves, are combined into composite uh, sound, into a composite sound. So with this additive synthesis, you basically 
have an oscillator for each of these partials here and you can influence each of these partials with, this os with these oscillators. And it's probably the most powerful synthesis method because you can create any sound imaginable with this, um, with this method. But it's also the most complex to control uh, synthesis method because you have to take control of each of these partials here. Maybe there are thousands of them. And each of them, each of these partials can have a frequency, can have a loudness, a different volume, and they can change over time. So when you press a key, right, when you have here an envelope, so each of these partials can have a different envelope, uh, a different volume envelope. So that's, that's, that makes the additive synthesis methods so complex or hard to control. And that's why a lot of people just go back to uh, subjective synthesis because it's straightforward. You start with a complex waveform. You have sometimes here even two waveforms you can combine to make the overtones even more complex. And then you reduce the overtones here with the filter and you yeah, get very far with this. You can create a lot of sounds with this. Okay, so just to show you some more examples, this is the polysynth here of Bitwig Studio. Let's go here to um, Monarch, which is also a classical monophonic um, subtractive synthesizer. You can see we have your oscillator section, three oscillators you can mix in with the mixing section. And at the end, we have your filter, filtering section. And that's the classical, as most classical as you can go with, this, with the subtractive synthesizer. Oscillator, mixing, and filter to reduce overtones, right? Also here with the CS80, we have here oscillators, also complex. We have only pulls here and try and saw. Yes, we have here a sign, but that's an LFO um, to modulate actually here the pitch. But here also you have two oscillators, one oscillator here, one oscillator here, and you have only try and saw. And then there's a mixing section. I think here you can mix it. And we have also here envelopes for the filter. So yeah, so oscillator, mixing, and filter. Again, classical setup. Also Diva here by UHE, classical setup. We have oscillators, three oscillators. Also here saw, try, saw, pulse, pulse width, and so on. Only rich, complex waveforms. Filter, uh, mixing section, filter at the end to reduce the overtones as you like. So every subjective synthesizer is this way. There is no sine wave in there. You maybe have something like something like polymer, which is a um, yeah, um, wavetable synthesizer. But here with the wavetable synthesizer, you can replace the wavetable with anything you like. So it's basically also just a classical subtractive synthesizer because we have an oscillator, we have a filter, and we have also here a mixer, mixer somewhere. No, it's not, not really a mixer, but we have here an oscillator and just a filter and envelope, but also classical setup. And you probably also want to have your rich, uh, complex waveform in here which mostly people use, of course, for bass lines and so on. Um, so it actually, so, so to, to, to actually makes sense to have a filter here, right? To filter something. So this is um, also something. Um, with other uh, subjective synthesis methods, sine waves make more sense. Like I said, you're an additive synthesis, also FM, also phase distortion. There it makes sense because the whole synthesis method is about combining sine partials to make complex sound waves out of it. Um, sample based vector synthesis, uh, granular. Yeah, it probably doesn't make sense to have a uh, sine in there and physical modeling, maybe there, I don't know. So um, yeah, I just want to give you an explanation why we don't have here a sine oscillator in the polysynth because it's a classical subtractive synthesizer. It makes no sense to have a pure waveform in there because then the filter have any work to do. 
and um, that's the explanation. I hope it makes sense. Um, what I can explain um, additionally is why we have here, why we have a sub or why we have a pulse in the song because these two waveforms give you different overtones. I think the, um, yeah, the saw here gives you basically even harmonics and the pulse gives you even and odd harmonics. Okay, so you can start with different uh, harmonic setting on the overtones and then act with the filter on it. Uh, I put a link in the description below where I can read all this stuff on Wikipedia if you want to, if you want to go more into detail. Uh, but I want to give you a rough idea how this works and why we don't have sine partials or sine oscillators in classical subtractive synthesis. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.